Tonight, Sony's new virtual reality headset. Several states scrutinize the Comcast merger, how to fix the Tesla, and an anti-social social media app. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 47 for Wednesday, March the 19th, 2014. Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Jira, an Atlassian product. Jira is the project management solution for teams planning, building, and launching great products. To learn more about Jira and try it free for 30 days, visit Atlassian.com slash TNT. I'm Tanya Hall. Let's get right to the tech feed. Virtual reality took another step toward actual reality this week. Yesterday, Sony unveiled its Project Morpheus, which is a prototype virtual reality headset for PlayStation 4. The device will be made available to developers soon as they can start building games that support it. Then today, Oculus VR rolled out the second version of its dev kit for Oculus Rift. The first version shipped a year ago. The new version is a higher resolution and features better head tracking. Both devices present 3D vision and 360 degree virtual screens, providing the illusion of total immersion in virtual environments. The Wall Street Journal reported earlier this week that Microsoft is working on a virtual reality device as well. For the Xbox platform, of course. Now, states are jumping into the Comcast Time Warner cable merger, Funwagon. According to Reuters, Florida and several other unnamed states will join the Justice Department to determine if the merger is legal under U.S. antitrust law. The Florida Attorney General is quoted as saying, We are a part of a multi-state group reviewing the proposed transaction along with the U.S. DOJ Antitrust Division. The focus is more on the broadband internet aspect of the deal rather than the cable TV service. A combined Comcast Time Warner would make up nearly one third of the U.S. internet market. In addition to the legal wrangling, the FCC must also approve this deal. Twitter has decided to stop work on a project to encrypt its users' direct messages. Encryption would have helped keep private user messages private and safe from being hacked or surveilled. Last November, news leaked that Twitter had started work on an encryption of direct messages. But now, they've dropped the project without telling why. Twitter has a pretty good track record of resisting government requests for data. For example, Twitter didn't cooperate with the NSA on its PRISM program. It's not clear if Twitter will encrypt messages at some point in the future. But for now, it looks like the project is at least on hold. Google updated the Android version of its search app expanding what you do with voice control. After saying, okay, Google, or tapping the microphone icon, you can say, take a photo or take a video, and it will. The effect is similar to the same feature on Google Glass. It's a perfect for taking selfies from a distance that's longer than your arm. Coming up, a social media app for when you're feeling antisocial and want to avoid your friends. Joining me next is Mike Ramsey from Wall Street Journal, to talk about what's going on with Tesla. But now, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Jira, an Atlassian product. Jira is one of the world's most powerful and customizable issue and project management systems. It easily captures and organizes your workflow so you can prioritize and take action on what's important while staying up to date with the activity going on around you. Easily capture, organize, and prioritize your team's issues, tasks, features, and bugs. Give your team a simple, intuitive interface to collaborate with each other in real time. Seamlessly integrate your planning documents, your backlog, your issues, and your code repository all in one platform. Get notifications via email, chat, at mentions, or RSS, and monitor streams of activity, self-updating reports, and dashboards so you're always in the know. Expand infinitely in any direction with thousands of JIRA add-ons, including test management, time tracking, project management, and hundreds of other uses. JIRA's integration with Git allows teams to follow their code from development all the way through delivery in one system. 
Jira is flexible and simple enough for a five-person startup, but powerful and reliable enough for a 100,000-person enterprise. Jira is used by over 25,000 companies, including 70% of the Fortune 100 and NASA. Go to Atlassian.com slash TN2 for more information on Jira. Monthly plans start at $10 a month for up to 10 users. Try it free for 30 days. Remember, Atlassian.com slash TN2 and select Try It For Free. Mike Ramsey is here from the Wall Street Journal to talk about Tesla. Mike, hi, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Good, good. So you've written several stories on the company that followed and followed them closely. New Jersey's decision to ban Tesla stores strikes at the heart of how Elon Musk sees his company compared to traditional auto dealers. His model is not to make most of their money from repairs. So I got to ask, how will Tesla maintain their cars? Well, the, the Tesla has service centers around the country and, and they are, you know, what Elon Musk has talked about with a fundamental conflict that happens between traditional auto dealers, every dealer that anyone's other than bought a Tesla from in the United States, they bought from some, an independent businessman who has purchased a franchise from a manufacturer. Tesla's selling vehicles direct to people. And one of the things that he has said is that he doesn't believe in the idea that you should make money off of service. In every state, the dealer associations see Tesla, even though the volumes are small, as a major threat to essentially their their way of doing business. Because if they're successful, they think that other manufacturers would want to duplicate it, essentially cut them out. And so they've been waging battles in every different in every state. Um, Tesla offers service now. If you know, really, the service side of the business isn't as threatened as the ability to sell cars directly. Uh, that's really what has been hurt by these battles. And, and in many states, including New Jersey now, if you want to buy a Tesla, you have to order it online, they ship it to your house. It has California plates, and then you have to go and switch things over. It's a real hassle. It, it definitely inhibits sales and makes it a lot harder for them to be successful. And in some states like Texas, big states, New York, the battle's coming up too. It could really, it could be a big deal for them to get their feet firmly planted here and, and to continue growing. Okay, GM is in the middle of a big recall. Tesla cars are so computerized that I wonder, mm -hmm. will it be possible for Tesla to deal with more recall issues by using a patch over the internet? Yeah, actually, Elon Musk, uh, you know, he's an interesting character. He's never been afraid to say the politically incorrect thing, but they had to do a recall a few months ago, and they he actually said it's not fair to call this a recall. We we put a software fix over the internet um, through Wi-Fi that went into the computers uh, of the of the vehicles on the ground and changed how the vehicles operated. So much of the cars are computerized, and electric vehicles are both very simple. They don't have a complex system. The motor is very simple. There's no transmission. You can use a computer to effectively change the problems and software on the on the vehicle. So it's it, it, it's kind of like at the forefront of how recalls are done. You don't even have to bring a vehicle in. An automaker can fix a problem with a vehicle and uh, correct something that could be, you know, potentially a safety issue or at least a warranty issue. So, you know, it really is it's kind of like the leading edge of what might happen to other vehicles as well because uh, many, many problems could be fixed by software control fixes. And, you know, you've seen other automakers start to do this as well. So the idea of fixing, you know, vehicle or safety problem over the internet is, is a real thing. And Tesla's already doing it. Batteries are a big component. Can you tell us about Tesla's Gigafactory for making batteries? I mean, why are they building this? Yeah, it, this is, this has been going on for a few months. I don't know how serious that people thought Tesla was when it was talking about the need to build a giant factory, but Tesla has proposed building a 10 million square foot battery factory that would produce enough batteries for up to half a million Model S or Model E, that's just a forthcoming car vehicles. And you know, to put the to put this in perspective of how big a factory it is, it would be larger by itself than all of the existing battery factories in the world combined today producing lithium ion 
um, batteries. So it's it would be absolutely massive. So if you can imagine every you know tablet, every iPhone, every laptop computer, and every car maker that already uses lithium ion batteries, if you combine them all together, the current world production, this factory would be bigger than that. Um, and the reason they do this is because Tesla's use so many batteries by themselves, they have to, no one can produce the, enough batteries for them as it is now. So they feel like they need to build this battery factory if they actually are going to sell the cars they say they're going to sell. So they're, they're planning to do this in one of four states in the Southwest. Uh, they want it to be solar powered and wind powered. And it would be, if they pull it off, Tesla would almost be more of a battery company than a car company. And they certainly would go from design and build an engineering company to more of a, you know, a much more of an engineering company. Wow. Or I mean, or rather manufacturing company. Well, thanks, Mike. That's great information. So where can people find your work and connect with you? Uh, well, you know, you can find me uh, on uh, thewallstreetjournal.com. I'm a frequent writer there, but you can also uh, get me on Twitter at uh, mramseywsj. Thanks very much. Appreciate you on. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. Well, we're all familiar with social networks like Facebook and Foursquare, which people connect with people you like. Well, now there's an anti-social network that helps you avoid people you don't like. It's called Cloak. Here's how it works. Just like any location-based social network, you can use Cloak iOS app to check in the app then monitors the locations of the people you follow on both Foursquare and Instagram so you can, that's right, avoid them. The app was created by the same people who made Unbaby Me, which is a Chrome and Firefox extension that hides your friend's baby pictures on Facebook. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at Twit TV. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Tanya Hall. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.